Um, I have not done on the menu in person. I was just sharing a story. I have done two in the past during the pandemic. I mean, we still could consider pandemic right early on. So I haven't done it in person and I'm really excited. And actually one of the talks that I gave created a connection with somebody that introduced me to the co-founder of the diversity movement, which now I've been on their team for two and a half years. So you never know what can come from these talks. And so I'm just honored to be here back doing this and create community. We are here today to talk about inclusive marketing. And I always have some learning agreements. I love the energy of on the menu. So I don't even feel like I really have to go over those um, agreements, but that's also an inclusive practice. I will have inclusion all throughout uh, the conversation, really setting the tone, the expectations. We're here to learn, we're here to listen. I always learn in a talk. So I'm gonna learn from you today, I'm sure through your questions and us interacting. So I welcome that conversation uh, and it's okay to make space and take space. We welcome the conversation. And really at the bottom are my FAQs, are fearfully asked questions, not frequently asked questions, because especially when we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, best practices, um, you know, us evolving in ourselves, sometimes people are afraid to ask questions. So whether that's whole group or that's something you pull me aside later or you'll get my contact info, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm not claiming to have all the answers. And in fact, none of us should have all the answers. I'm a continual lifelong learner. And that's how I approach my life and this work. So just kind of uh, bringing us together a little bit here. Is this working? There we go. This is an interactive tool. If you would like to take your devices out and online, I believe there's a link that's going to be put in the chat. Slido, has anybody used Slido before or seen this tool? Okay, it got, got one, one head nod. I'm just going to have you uh, click that QR code or you can put the URL in and uh, there's a number 1352. Five nine six, and we're just going to start off with some questions. Now, what I want you to know is you don't have to put your name. I'm not collecting your email, <laughs> IP addresses, nothing on the back end. It is also an inclusive practice, you know, that anonymous feedback. I'm going to go to the next slide. However, the QR code will also be on that slide. Is everybody okay to interact? And there's no requirement. There's no, there's no requirement. So my question is, what makes you engage with, purchase from, and or support a brand? What makes you engage with, support, purchase from, and a brand? And I know online, just so you know, you don't see the QR code. Again, online, you will have a URL. You can join the Slido there. What will start happening in this tool is you'll see eight participants are typing and it will start showing up once you hit send or submit, it will start showing up here on the screen. And I'll also read out the output uh, for those online. So visual interests, sustainable and ethical business practices. All right, principles. They offer what you need. They value you as a consumer. Okay, utility, purpose. Yeah, aligns with buyer values. This is great, thank you. You feel included. Yes. Clearly knowing a mission of an organization of business. Branding, mission, values. Quality, external relations, mission statement, vision, ESG, which is environmental social governance for, for the acronym ESG. Listen to your needs. Networking. This is great. Thank you. All right. I like what they sell and what they stand for. Having a product or service you desire. Ethics. There's some overlap, right? There's some commonality in what we're talking about. Customer service. Thank you. I always like starting with some interaction, right? All right. And keep them coming. I see somebody else is typing. Thank you. And we'll pause there for a second. Affordability. Affordability can also equate to access in a way. One component of access. Accessibility can be many different things, right? These are, these are very important points. That's what's important to you. And there's a lot of commonality, as I said. So how do we bridge that into, if you're a business owner, community member, what does that mean? And we'll, we'll also talk about, if we have time later, on the flip side, what's made you say, I don't think so, <laughs> to a brand or a product? 
Um, I've got stories I can share with you. I'm sure we all have stories. And so when we're thinking about marketing and branding and telling our story and connecting with people and community, and it's okay to have this idea of inclusion, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, of course is the right thing to do. I'm a DEI practitioner. I've been in this space since 2015. Yes, this is the right thing to do. I am not afraid to talk about business. I build a few businesses. I work in amazing businesses and I work with amazing groups and people. And it's okay to think about the lens of inclusion for your business as well. And that's not to take any authenticity away or emotion or ethics, morals, values, that all goes into the work. So what actually is inclusive marketing? I gave you a definition, <laughs> if you have to like a definition, and I'll read it. Marketing that addresses individuals from all backgrounds and demographic groups, breaks down traditional assumptions about consumers, and tells new, you know, more accurate stories of who people are. And inclusive marketing, you may have heard something similar or even use the language similar. And we're going to, who likes inclusive language? Maybe just Susie to date, but I love inclusive language. Inclusive marketing in the past has been called multicultural marketing. You heard that? So what I get asked is, is there a right or wrong answer? Oh my goodness, because I might have a stomach ache right now. <laughs> That's what we say or, or use. I will say that as inclusive language is evolving, I would evolve to use inclusive marketing instead of multicultural marketing. Now we are going to think about and talk about culturally diverse populations, but multicultural is being phased out because sometimes actually it excludes. So I just wanted to mention that it's okay if you say it for research purposes and what we do every day, this is what we would say is most up to date with language. Now, inclusive marketing, in order for it to be authentic, effective, um, and you want to do that as a marketer, you know, whether that's your own sole brand, you're working with a team, maybe you're not a marketer at all. You are not involved with branding at all. Well, you're a consumer as we just discovered. And also, especially if you're on teams and organizations, you hopefully have voices to be heard. And your voices should be invited to the table as well uh, as, as groups are making decisions. So we really want to think about experiences that are authentic and going back to kind of the first definition, not making assumptions about groups or people. And how do we tell better stories? through what we're showing and what we're um, connecting. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, that was, they're just, it's very exciting here today. Okay, you got a preview. Okay, so what we're doing here, inclusive marketing. Also, has anybody heard the word intersectionality? Okay, intersectionality. We all have intersectional parts of who we are. And there's a whole conversation in DEI about intersectionality. We'll have coffee call me, we can talk about it, I, I welcome it. Um, but it is important to think about in the marketing, branding, storytelling space, right? We all, all of us have different parts of who we are. And as we just saw in our first interaction, we wanna feel seen, we wanna feel heard, not only feel it, we wanna know it. And it's, it's hard as we're running businesses, how am I going to reach everybody? Do I actually wanna reach everybody? That's a question to ask. That's not a right or wrong answer. What's best for your business? Who are you trying to serve? And so we want to think about how we're all very complex, which is a beautiful thing. I love business. I love business. <laughs> so as it's really interesting because some of these things came up in our uh, conversation just a couple minutes ago. Inclusive marketing is a highly effective business approach. Yes, it is. Of course, we want to make a positive social impact. That's only increasing in businesses these days. Maybe it's, you know, you are outward of who you support, right, uh, in the community. You give donations per sale. Maybe you have special events per year. Whatever that means to you, it means to you, right? There's, again, there's not a right or wrong answer. Inclusive marketing can help you attract new markets, especially if you're seeing demographics stagnant, you know, you've got your loyal people. Well, what would happen if we could reach X audience? Inclusive marketing and the framework for it can help you get there. You wanna, of course, retain those existing consumers. 
who's been loyal to a brand and then something happens and you're like, okay, this is hard, but I'm breaking up with you. I've broken up with a few people. <laughs> I'm part of the LGBTQ plus community. Just go from there, <laughs> you know, thinking about brands, right? Um, and then of course you want to increase your revenue and profit. I probably am not going to talk to any business owner, myself included, that doesn't want to have a sustainable income. Am I correct? And keep growing. Absolutely. So we want to talk about how do we do that? Here's some, here are some numbers. I'm sorry, Cassandra. I keep, I keep, I, I keep moving. I move. This is how I'm, so I'm staying right here, but I'm usually all over the place. So I just need you to know I move. I know. I know. Um, we love numbers. I love some numbers. I love data. So here's some data for you. If you ever want any of this information, let me know, right? Specifically, hey, Susie, you said this. Can you pull that out for me? Just email me, message me, let me know. I'll get you everything you need um, or want. We want to think about culturally diverse. So instead of the multicultural, it's, it's almost saying the same thing, but it's more inclusive to say culturally diverse. Markets have $3.9 trillion of buying power. We should be having conversations, right? And I'm not assuming you're not, but my, my approach is I'm no, making no assumptions, right? That we want to be talking about this. That's important. From a one person business to tens of thousands of employees, we can think about this. 95% um, of multicultural or culturally diverse millennials are brand loyal. So I also love generational diversity. In the workplace and in our society, active in our society, we have the most generations in our workplaces and working on teams together than ever before. And when we break down what's important to different generations, who's you know buying, spending, uh, interacting with different brands, we can break this down and really look at millennials and Gen Z, not to discredit any other generation because we are in the power of inclusion here today. I wanna make that known. This is something very important right? 70% of marketers globally state using more diverse content will help a brand reputation. So think about the visuals, the videos, even the audio, you know, the, how you connect with your story is important. And so also brands with high diversity within themselves or their teams see increased profits. What that's really saying is if you have the opportunity, and actually I talk about it somewhere else in a, just a little bit, if you're a team of one, reach out to community. Think about if we all sat together in maybe two groups and talked about a branding or marketing strategy with some of us knowing each other, some of us being strangers, can you imagine how amazing that conversation would be and what ideas would come out of that conversation? So whether you're a team of one or you're a team of 100, who are you having in the conversations? Who is on the team? How do we build authentic relationships with people to have them share their voices, right? Because we also don't want to take advantage of voices. Has anybody felt that way before? Okay, many of us have, right? We don't want that. So it's about that authentic team building, relationship building, community building, but we want those diverse perspectives. This is a little bit more data. I promise I'll, I'll stop. Who likes the data with me? Just let me know I have a couple of you in here. Okay, <laughs> this is a busy slide and I recognize visually this is very busy. So I don't wanna necessarily read all of this, but when we're thinking about, and we're really looking at businesses, right? And we're, we're taking, I talked about generational differences, find out what your demographic, you know your ideal consumer, your ideal customer, that's the goal, then what's your stretch? And then think about generation, think about different dimensions of diversity. So I'm just breaking a few things down. This is not the day to encompass all, right? And I wanna recognize that. The buying power of women, the buying power of LGBTQ plus individuals, racially and ethnically diverse individuals and people with disabilities. Oftentimes people, sometimes included, especially over here, not included, in a lot of what we see, a lot of what we hear, a lot of what is out there for us to digest. If we're simply talking about money, well, wow, have we missed out? And then of course, of course, we're not even showing what our actual society in our world looks like. 
We are the most culturally diverse society that we've ever been, just in the United States alone. That's something special. That's important. We cannot ignore that. And then when we're talking about business, this is this is a lot. So do you, do you see all the trillions? If you don't, that's why I'm pointing to them. Trillion, trillion, trillion. trillion. We're not talking a million, hundreds of thousands. We're talking trillions of dollars. Some global, some U.S., right? So in the United States, I mean, and actually this LGBT number, just because you know, that's that's some of my lane, that's increased. In the U.S., that's 1.4 trillion currently. And it's only increasing because the LGBT population that's reporting and self-identifying is increasing. And that will continue with other dimensions of diversity. I'll pause, I'll pause here for just a second. I know, more data. I'm almost done. Um, <laughs> any questions? Is there anything in the chat? I love the data is one of the comments. Oh, yes. <laughs> I promise I have more than data for you today. <laughs> I promise. Do you know how hard it was to just like pick a few slides today? Um, we have pages and pages. But what this is saying, right, um, on this slide, and, and it's reiterating my point. People will be loyal. What you all said already, which is why I'm not going to overly repeat it. I want to feel seen. I want to feel heard. I want to support somebody that aligns with my values. Not only is that happening in consumerism, where else is that happening, do you think? The, everywhere almost. Everywhere. Workplace. The questions being asked in interviews. I have hiring teams call me and say, uh, this is the question I got asked today. I said, yep, what's your answer? <laughs> what do you need to answer that? Can I help you craft an answer? What is your ESG, environmental social governance plan report? When does that come out? We don't all have to have them, you know, or what's your commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion? Not just the commitment. What about hiring? What about development? What about promotion, right? So not only in the consumer marketing world, we're talking about that today, but all around us. And you're right. It's all around us. So those are some numbers there and more numbers. <laughs> Basically, again, people want to also see themselves represented. They want to see themselves. Now, what we need to think about as business owners, don't create an inauthentic narrative. Please don't. That's not what I'm saying. And you don't want to put stories or visuals out that don't truly represent who you are or where you are in your journey. Maybe you really hope to tap into a certain demographic or community. You're not there yet. That's okay. Create a strategy. Have a timeline for that. Because who, who's also just... Who's, I say smell it up, but like, who's looked at an ad or a story and been like, well, okay, I'll give it to that they were trying, but that is not who these people are. This is not, and then what does that make us do? Done. They've lost us. So that's why also the conversations from the beginning, hey, you know, it's like, hey, Susie, I'm thinking about this. I'd like your perspective on it. Do you know how many people like to help us in business? It's hard. Sometimes if you're a solopreneur, right, we get in our bubble and we forget sometimes. People want to help. Create a focus group. I've done, hey, I'll take you to coffee. I need five of you around the table and I need you. I'm going to just, I need the honest truth. And I get it. And that's great, right? So this is just saying the mirror strategy, this is a strategy. So just as in we're learning specifics today, the mirror strategy is just about reflect, reflection, literal reflection that you can see yourselves um, represented in brands. All right. Examples of marketing mishaps. I can catch them now <laughs> faster than I used to, but I, assume I don't always. So cultural appropriation versus appreciation. This is not just about marketing, is it? This is in music. This right here is about fashion. I mean, this is all over the place. Um, has anybody maybe experienced feeling like something was culturally appropriated from them? That does not feel good, does it? It's really actually discriminatory. So in marketing, this happens all the time in marketing. All the time in marketing. So this is a person um, that was on the cover of Vogue in Japan in some fairly traditional clothing, a little bit more modern. It's not somebody from the community. There was no homage or honoring of the history of these garments or where they started. That's appropriation. It's taking something from somebody's culture and identity without respect, 
without conversation, without really thought to the effects of that. And so this was not well received. This is, this is one that of course was not well received. And it was really, really unfortunate. It was a big miss. The thing is oftentimes with marketing and branding, it's a missed opportunity. It's just a missed opportunity. Um, yes. Why did they make that mistake? Well, that's a great question. And I don't have the exact answer because I wasn't in that room, but what I can gather, right, which a lot of times happens, there are not enough diverse voices and perspectives around the decision table. And I could tell you three other stories, two specifically in the last six months <laughs> um, here in the U.S. even, that that's, that's what's occurred. It is the miss of somebody just having the permission, right? And a lot of people with different dimensions of diversity, unfortunately, don't have the permission and the safety to say, wait a second, we need to think about this. And when we do say that, that there's enough psychological safety and support in, in those rooms that people say, you know what? We hadn't thought about it that way. Thank you so much. And while that's not, I know that's still a broad answer to your question, but I would say nine times out of 10, it is, it can be actually that simple where it's, we didn't have enough people around the table and the people in power are sometimes quite homogenous and they make those missteps because we don't have the conversations and the people in the rooms that we should have. I hope that helps answer your question. Yeah, that's a great question. So yes, so that was just one example of a marketing misstep, especially with cultural appropriation versus appreciation. And that, that happens a lot. I mean, take it out of the marketing, think about different holidays, you know, and we just see that all over. So I don't want this conversation to just stay in marketing. Cultural appropriation and appreciation happens everywhere all the time, just for the sake of today, focusing it. Yes. How do like top executives or even small businesses identify a certain group, to a person to represent a certain group mm -hmm. to, to better speak to that market? Yeah. And compare them with other folks who qualify. Like, how, how do I say, you know, tracking this question, like, in terms of validity, like, hey, yeah. just because you are the you're the best person That's right. to spot, mm -hmm. how do you like, ask those questions to say, hey, are you involved in your community? Are you like an activist? Are you like, you know, do you know the history of a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that you can, you know, impress me? Like, how do you identify? Better? Right. That's a great question for many reasons. One, because we don't want to take advantage of voices, right? And make the assumption, like, for example, right? I'm in the, L I'm in the LGBT plus community. I'm one teeny tiny little demographic of a definitely not a monolith. None of us are in monolith communities, right? So I'm glad that you brought that's the undercurrent also of what you're saying here. And that we can't make an assumption that one, I want to participate. Generally, I do. You can call me, okay? Because <laughs> um, I'm an extrovert. But it doesn't mean I have all the answers. Or how could I speak for the transgender community, right? For, for example. And so how do you have, so I'm getting to your question, but I, that, that context I think is important, right? As we're learning about this. Um, there's various ways. So if you're going into the community you can put out, I mean, put it out on social media. We're looking for voices to represent X communities. We are really inviting um, a thoughtful educational conversation. Please reply. If it's within a team, right, or a business, we'll, we'll have executives and we really try to push executives to share information. Put it on the people managers, supervisors. Hey, let's have your individual contributors come up and talk to us about X, Y, Z. And that actually also goes outside of just something in marketing. That also helps for development, mentorship, and opportunity and access to growth in organizations. And so it does take a commitment and also the lack of ego, which sometimes gets in the way of top executives, right? To say, hey, you know what? I haven't talked to um, this community that are part of my individual contributors. I'm not going to make an assumption. We're going to put a call out. And it's also how you ask, hey, Susie, I said I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to you exactly when I was doing things. It's not a question. I'm just using you as a, so I'll, I'll go over here. <laughs> you know, hey, Susie, we're thinking about doing a campaign to reach the LGBTQ plus community. Is that something you're comfortable with contributing to? If not, totally fine. We're open to other suggestions. We, um, you know, we wanted to ask you first, but you also, it depends on your relationship. <laughs> to me, 
we're all buddies now. You could send me an email or send me, <laughs> call me up and say, hey, could I have your opinion on? I'll say, sure. Or I have the opportunity to say, you know what? I'm not the best person for that. Let me pass this mic and somebody else is, right? So it's the intention, it's how you ask. And it's always the space for people to say no and not have the pressure. Because they also, not only, may, we can't make the assumption they're an expert, we also can't make the assumption that they're okay, right? We have a lot we're carrying. And sometimes when we're asking those questions, we may be regurgitating some pain, trauma, discrimination. We don't know. We all are carrying different things. So again, it's the approach. Hey, we're really thinking about this is important to us as a business. No pressure. This is how to get in touch with me. You know, this is this is the time frame. Put a time frame in the next 48 hours, week, two weeks. I'd love to hear your opinions. If not, I don't hear from you. No worries. Maybe we could collaborate on something else. I hope that helps. Like some of those tactical yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. So, are there guidance or recommendations on the flip side? So say you're mm -hmm. not being consulted or asked to provide mm -hmm. an opinion based on a specific group, but you want to because mm -hmm. you see maybe some of the appropriation happening. There's just a lack of diversity within whether it's ad or an organization. Um, maybe guidance on how to give that feedback, but yes. also how to make a space for you to be that person right. for reference without crossing that defensive or offensive line. Yeah, that's, thank you for the question. It, that is also about approach. So what I will generally say with giving feedback uh, and you want to give the feedback, there hasn't been a space created and you're willing um, to be and want to be in that space. Usually giving that constructive feedback and then whether it's via phone, via Zoom, email, whatever it is, DM, be part of the solution. Say, I would like to give feedback on, give your feedback. I am open, willing to be part of the solution. Here's actually an idea about how to do that. Now, the risk there is that somebody takes your voice. And I want to acknowledge that. And that happens a lot, specifically in underrepresented communities. So I am not going to shy away from talking about that. right? So that's one approach. If you don't feel safe enough to give the solution, then leave it on them to contact you. Say, I, I'm very passionate about, or this means a lot to me. I've noticed in, in no, um, you can say, we don't want to pad things for people either. So like, that's a whole other day, <laughs> um, but we can talk about that. But hey, this is something I've noticed. It's really important to me. You know, I'm a business owner. This is, this is where I feel like I could be helpful. Here's my number. Here's when we can meet. I would love to be part of it. So you don't have to offer the solution, right? Especially if you don't feel safe, maybe you don't know somebody, somebody might capitalize on your thoughts and ideas, leave it open-ended, but it, it is that approach. I find that um, it does not mean we can't be straightforward. It does not mean we can't be passionate or blunt, quite frankly. When we know our audience, potentially that's receiving these messages of feedback. Sometimes we need to differentiate our conversation, at least at the beginning to get us in. Am I saying is that that's the right thing? No, we're working in progress where a lot of people don't know how to take feedback. So I, I hope that helps. It's, it's that approach, differentiating your approach. Do your research. You know, who are you speaking to? What's the history of this company? Or, you know, or whatever it is. What ads have you seen? Or what things have you wanted to support? But just that one thing that makes you not. And that's something I will tell you. When you tell a business, oh, I was going to spend my money and I didn't, <laughs> they're going to listen to you. <laughs> they're going to listen to you. Hey, I really wanted to buy X or purchase this for my family, for myself. Put it in there. Here's what held me back from that. I would love to have a conversation about it. Yeah, great question. The sort of following up on this question. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I sort of I got the the main part of it, but you talked about like some, like sort of reaching out to my main level. Um, I think the habit a lot of us fall in here, and we just want to watch, you know, surrounded by people who mm -hmm. have similar thoughts and that right. nature. Um, I remember I, I was working with a guy, and uh, all of a sudden I figured out he had different views on things. I'm like. Well, he hangs out with this person who I would think would mm -hmm. sort of maybe educate them on how this is right or wrong. And I found out, okay, this person has skewed views. You know what I'm saying? Would you like, like you said, it's not like this one person doesn't represent everybody. Right. What would be the proper approach of saying, like, okay, like, hey, I know this person or the people that I'm hanging around with, still they all have a similar view. Even if I ask this one, this one, this one, they all mm -hmm. they probably think similar to me. What is the proper outreach to mm -hmm. say, hey, I need to go to this? maybe different group of people right. to 
S, you know, yeah. Asset, mm -hmm. right? What was the property? Uh, great question. And that I actually have an exercise I can tell you about to actually um, really take an inventory of, of this subject. So I'll remind me, I'll come back to it. it it's a quick uh, activity that you can even do while I'm talking or, you know, after this. So that is about intentional relationship building. So you actually may, I always say for all, a lot of this work, let's be proactive and not reactive. So let's think about, okay, well, I'm taking inventory of, I might have people around me that have the same views. Okay, well, I want to be able to tap into or call upon people that are not like myself. So it's taking the time to understand where to cultivate the relationships. So it may be going to an event, you know, like a networking event saying, hey, you know, this is, I'm just learning, I'm meeting people, keep your inventory of people and say, oh, I met Susie at that thing. You know, I could reach out to her, It'd be nice to reconnect have some coffees, have a conversation. You know, it's okay to be at the point, hey, I met you at that networking event, really struck struck me that I might not, I, I might need to learn something from you. I could learn something from you or we could learn from each other, quite frankly. I'm a lifelong learner. So I'm always thinking about what can I learn? Um, would you be open to a conversation? I'm really looking for X as a solution to Y. Would you like to contribute, right? And so networking events, if it's a specific group, you know, going to, um, when I say events, it could be a performance. It could be a restaurant. It could be somewhere that you just generally don't show up for the sake of curiosity and always kind of holding ourselves accountable for making one personal connection. And I know sometimes that's harder, right? If we're introverted, we're not like me, who my wife is like, why do you have 700 million best friends? You know, and that's not for everybody. So I want to recognize that. But if we can hold ourselves accountable and even mentally prepare for going to places and saying, I'm going to make one connection. And what will that, that will do is slowly cultivate the group where it might not be your everyday people, but you have enough respect for one another that you could say, Hey, I want to have a conversation about something that I don't know, or you may know. And that's really worked for people. I know that sometimes that seems a little broad and maybe a little scary, but it really, really works um, for people. Thanks. Thank you. Um, the little activity I was talking about, you can Google this um, and look it up. I have a different, a semi different version, slightly, excuse me, different version of it, but it's called the Trusted 10. It's really about, it's, it's an unconscious bias activity. However, we can really put it in a lot of context of business. So I do Trusted 6. I take it down from 10 to 6. You can also do 2, okay? But what you want to think about are your most trusted people and think about the category. So at home, you know, in my personal life, my trusted six, in my business life, my trusted six, in my, maybe it's faith practice life, you know, whatever your buckets are, where you show up, who are your trusted one to six people? And I've actually had a lot of people in the workplace say, Susie, I don't have a name to put down on this list. Again, different day, different type of DEI conversation, right? But for this purpose and your question and some of the previous questions, put the names down and think about their dimensions of diversity you may or may not know. So a little bit of this is potentially based on assumption, the age of somebody, the industry they're in, maybe their education level, which I'm not saying means anything or not, quite frankly, right? But dimensions of who they are, what their interests are what their family structure is like, maybe what their faith practices are or spiritual practices. And what you can do is see, oh, oh yeah, I got everybody around me just like me. Now, is that saying go out and create inauthentic relationships? And I, I'm gonna say a word that I do have a hard time with, but I, I think it's common language, so I'll still use it today and tokenize somebody. No, that is not what I'm saying. And that quite frankly would be opposite of what we're talking about. Um, but it makes us aware. And when we're thinking about our businesses, especially when we're on potentially teams of one, two, five, you know, 10, 20, wow, we may need to, we may need to go to about as a group, two or three networking events a quarter. Maybe we could rotate that as a team, come back with our contacts, Let's follow up with a virtual coffee. Like there's ways to take the inventory and then see where you might have some pockets that might excite you as well. So that helps. Thank you for the question. Um, I'm keeping track of time. Another marketing mishap, this one, <laughs> the perfect body. This is old already, but I, I brought it in for today. <laughs> um, what's, 
what's going on here? <laughs> so, tell me about this. <laughs> Somebody, yes. 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 And yes, yes, yes. Let's keep on going. <laughs> This is problematic for many reasons, and this is not new. I, I, I was, I have all kinds of slides, but I brought this, this one in. Right. So it goes back to a question before: Who was in the room? Who was having conversations? The same people. Actually, what did, there was a documentary on Victoria's Secret. Anybody watch that on Hulu? Oh, it was interesting. The same people that were also not women were in the room making these decisions, and of one demographic. Yes. Well, uh... That's right. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Thank you for your contribution. Yes. I don't really, it's annoying that I see this all the time because I don't need to see it ever again. <laughs> I use it as an example. Well, Aerie is another brand that, and I know the image is a little bit harder to see with this lighting online. I know you can see it. There are some more you know, um, dimensions of diversity. You do have different skin tones. You have different heights. You have different ability. They're doing okay. Yeah, they're doing okay. It could be better. <laughs> it could be better. What could be better about this? You can shout it out if you want or put it in the chat. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. This is still floating around the same body shape. Same, height. same height. Age. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yep. So, um, and I struggle with this personally. Mm -hmm. So I have a target demographic, mm -hmm. a niche person. Yeah. Um, so if we're saying incorporate different ages, I know Aries' age is not for even me right. or older. Like mm -hmm. so, putting an older woman in their advertisement would it be just to be inclusive because that's right. not their target demographic? Right, that's a great question. So this will go to what is what is your target demographic, and what are your values? And give yourself a little stretch. While you have your target demographic, what's the vision long-term for the business? Is it only to stay in this demographic? And is that sustainable? Some of us would say, yes, absolutely, Susie, it is. Sure, I'm not gonna, I'm not to tell you otherwise, right? Um, but if there's an idea of, well, what if? What if? Then think about some of that expansion of inclusion. And even within, so what we can say is even within our target demographic, age, person, whatever it is, what are we potentially missing? You could have an answer of, I'm missing nothing. And if you're firm in that, wonderful. And if it's a, oh, wait, I might need to think differently about it with the same vision and knowing of who you're connecting with, then okay. But that's what I would ask. So don't, don't um, waver from your values of your business, your mission, and who you are serving and connecting with. It's continually asking ourselves, Sometimes with no answer, it, what am I missing? Who am I not including? What conversation might I need to have? That's that's exactly to, to the point. Yeah. So for this, right, if their target demographic is not an older demographic, then okay, you're not going to see an older person in, in these ads. And so what we could say is within, so you all gave some great examples. So within that demographic or the target age, let's say, or person, we still could do a little bit more in height, height uh, differentiation, body size differentiation, you know, even potentially more ability. So, so it's not straying so far and just trying to, we're going to cast the net and have everybody just because that's not going to be authentic to who you are as a business. And we don't want that. So that's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Quick, um, some best practices, which we've gone through a lot of these already, and then we'll have some time um, at the end for some questions. And I have a resource for you at the end. It's, it's a guide on inclusive marketing, and I'll tell you about that in a little bit. 
So create an authentic brand message. As we were just really talking about, what is, what is your message? What story do you want to tell? Who are you trying to connect with first and foremost? And then potentially what's the sustainable vision of that? Because what works right at the beginning may not work two years down the road. Our culture, our society, our people are evolving and changing. And based on even what we said at the beginning, do we have high expectations for businesses? Yes, we do, as we should, right? And so we need to think about what that brand message is, not only now, but also for in the future. And not to get overwhelmed by that. Our inclusive language. As I mentioned, I like inclusive language and I mess up all the time. We're human. A lot of people will say, can I say anything anymore? I don't know. I don't want to mess up. Who's had that feeling? I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to do the wrong thing. I know how that feels. I'm with you every day because I'm learning. This is also important for have somebody sweep, you know, that's an expert in inclusive language. Hey, we're putting out a big news. Maybe it's not even on everything. It's a big newsletter. It's a big push for a sale. It's a new ad we're running. Can somebody look at the language verbally and visually? I can sit, I'm an artist as well. So I consider language visual as well, right? So thinking about language. Yes. I would say both. It's an annoying answer because we don't know what people, some people are able to see and some people are not able to see. So the, for that's just an example. So if you have a powerful image, you can describe that image, then the text that would be with it is just as important as that image and vice versa. You know, some people learn and connect only through visuals and they're never going to read what's on a post or in a newsletter. And so that's why that combination is very, very vital. And I'm sorry that was such an annoying answer, but I want to tell you what, what I believe is the truth. <laughs> so um, thank you for that question. Inclusive language. You know, and going back to inclusive language, again, it depends on your demographic. If you're speaking to women, you'll use she, her pronouns most of the time. But we know that more and more people are using different pronouns, specifically neutral pronouns like they, them. You know, if and I have somebody I know is hiring and they, I looked at their job description. So it's, it's the, your brand message is also in all of those things too. I had a friend send me actually a job description. Not, I'm not looking for anything. It was, can, do you know somebody for X position? That's what it was. It was a DEI position, right? This is, I know we're not, a diversity, equity, and inclusion position said he, she through the whole job description. I'm like, I'm not sending any of my DEI practitioners that way. That was a brand message. That company is not ready for that DEI position based on the language they were using, not just pronoun, there were other things, but that's just, it's important. Um, I'm sorry. Diverse representation and imagery. This goes back to the example. We're going to be authentic. It's not just because. It's not to just show everybody. Who are you connecting with? What do you want to show? How do you want to tell the story? Yes. Maybe the company you're talking about, um, you have the power to influence and change people. Yes. What if uh, the way of looking at it is, boy, they really need something yeah. like that. I'm going to yes. send my best people. You're right. I think that's a... I think that's a great way. I had a very emotional reaction to it. So this is why we need diverse perspectives. <laughs> this is exactly it. Yes. And actually the person I know, so for, for to that point, um, I, I've asked for a conversation because I do, I want to say, here's some feedback so they could go edit that. So it could reach more because reason being, and I will say more specifically, most LGBTQ plus candidates that would read that would probably not apply. So to your point, could we get some feedback so they could rewrite it and then expand that reach? So thank you. You want to come with me so I don't get so emotional? I think it's good. I think we need that. Oh, thank you. And that's a great perspective, right? Look at that together, together. So thank you. Yes. I would react the same way you do. Well. Because you also don't want to send someone into like a mess. They're just not ready. Yeah. So many of these companies have a performative aspect, and I get these mm -hmm. folks, but they're not ready, and they hire all these people, and they're like, they're just happy one, and they're yeah. awesome. Yeah, so that's... I, 
anyway. it's a lot so yeah thank both of you are true right that and that that this is a great example of actually the power of inclusion because there's no there's no right or wrong in in the comments right i think that actually sparks a really important conversation and i know more about this big this company that actually made me have that reaction <laughs> but we'll leave that this is being recorded too so um, <laughs> so um ask me for coffee um but yeah so i i love that and the whole conversation about dei dei and businesses dei practitioners all that i have a lot of information on that so we talked about engage diverse voices from your team if you're a team of one how to reach out we we covered this one so i this is really what i was talking about um earlier also to your point we don't want to make assumptions about culturally diverse um one to contribute and two what they want and need how am i supposed to make an assumption of what you may want to need to what you may want to need to what you may want to need i'm not in your lived experience but we can have a conversation so i understand and that if i choose representation it will be as authentic as possible and it's not that i made this assumption on my own that takes time. It's not always a win-win situation, but there should be effort there. So that that's the assumption um, component. And I will say there's a lot of assumptions about a lot of different people. As people are trying to include, just in a specific set of research, as people are trying to include more people with um, various abilities, or you could say disability, language is floating here, um, a lot of people are getting it wrong because the, the community is not engaged. And so the specific community. So that that's not to discredit any other community or any other dimension of diversity. I just wanted to, I'm tracking some subset of research on that. Um, digital platforms, audit platforms, uh, website, socials, you know, for inclusion, colors, branding, contrast, hashtags you know, alt text on images. And I, I miss it sometimes. It's, I will admit I'm a work in progress, right? I don't need to, I have the privilege of not having to think about that. So I need to make myself understand and learn. So I know that if I post something or I want somebody to see or hear the story, I make it as accessible as possible. And I mess up a lot and we're working on it, right? So we're all human in here in this, in this um, process. So that's what that means. And then technology to reach young audiences. I'm not <laughs> trying. I have a couple things on generation here. I don't. I don't want to be exclusionary. Um, we know that consumers are more and more on technology. Actually, of all ages, of all ages, I'm very proud of my mother. She is now finally purchasing things online. How long has online purchasing been? And I'm very proud of her because <laughs> um, it makes my life easier. Also, <laughs> but um, just thinking about your audiences you know, and, and what they engage in. So a little bit of a quick reflection. What I want to do, I'm going to come back to this, actually. This is an offer for anybody online here. You don't have to scan this. This is um, from the diversity movement. It's our gift to you, actually, because this is usually behind a paywall. Um, this is best practices to inclusive marketing. You'll see a lot of what we talked about in there today. It's a whole guidebook. And we actually have a wonderful partnership with the American Marketing Association. We continue to do work. So their values, our values are grounded and um, we've written this guide. So if you scan that, you'll get access um, to, to that. I encourage you to, it's just a gift. You don't have to, no pressure. Um, but just wanted to offer that to you. Cause I know listening, talking, you know, slides, it's a lot. And a lot of what I've talked about today is in there. So I'll give a moment to scan that. Um, and online, are they able to, they're good seeing it. Yes, okay. Good. Okay. Well, one, one person You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. And even if you scan it, leave it up in your browser and it, say you get home and you, oh, Susie, I wanted that thing. And I didn't just email me and <laughs> we'll get it to you. Okay. Um, in the last couple minutes here, I have some questions and then I'll make sure to um, leave time to give you my contact info, turn it back to you. But a couple questions I had are uh, open for your questions. I don't need you to answer these for me. You can ask me additional questions. But are there brands you haven't supported, you haven't engaged with? You know, are there any particular ads or campaigns? I may or may not know about them. Um, it's not my every day um, that I'm watching or listening to, to everything, um, but it, that you have questions about and any general questions. So really open floor for the next couple of minutes. I've loved all the questions thus far. 
Yes. It's sort of about the spirit a little bit. So I feel, I feel like there's like a movement now where there are certain people who are saying like, hey, I don't care if you are in this if I'm supposed to go with this brand. And so mm -hmm. those brands seem to lean into like, okay, well, this is just me. I don't care about this or somebody else because I have my story. Mm -hmm. How 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 is that handled from like a um I guess a, is that just sort of like they're gonna say, hey, I don't care about like I know this may have been these groups, I know I got my supporters on the gonna... Well, I mean, unfortunately that happens a lot. So what to to expand a bit. Um with that answer, <laughs> there's most likely a lot of uh lack of education lack of empathy and understanding and willingness to listen and learn if that's general reaction. And some businesses that have that answer very much, and I will say it over and over again, I've said it today, as businesses, we're involved with businesses, we work for businesses, we create our own, we know our values and we're probably not gonna stray from those. And unfortunately, but it is true, and there's space for people to have a certain set of values as a business that are not inclusive and they will not waver, especially if the consumer continues to consume. So as those slides I had up there with all those trillions and trillions of dollars, the consumers sometimes, and I actually think that's growing, have a lot of power. And it's how do we actually tap into those audiences, the supporters that are still saying, yeah, I'm gonna still buy that. Yeah, They're, they don't align with me. But our job, right, which takes sometimes time and maybe some more money that we may or may not have to say, well, this is similar and I align with them. I'm going there. Yeah. So it's it's a very interesting, nuanced, complex situation. But yep. I, mean, I guess mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, like they would have to kind of be like, hey, you know, by the brand, I get that we're doing this, but we just change this a little bit. And right. at the end, it seems like they say, no, nah, like we're good with this. Right. We're not going to change. So I, just, that was just mm -hmm. I would think they would have somebody up high enough, like, hey, we can make you more money. And like, nah. Just... Yeah, I, I, I think that um, businesses in the future to actually be sustainable and last um, are going to have to make some choices in that conversation. And, you know, even with certain things going on socially, oh, businesses, they're quiet. Silence speaks more than words, even if you get your words wrong sometimes right and so yeah i th i think that there are more there will be more conversations there are more conversations and at the same time some of what we think you were bringing up some of these businesses aren't ready so that's where then also as the consumer they're like well what is this this is so out of nowhere for this brand what are they trying to do because it doesn't align with their values and then the right people weren't in the room to create the strategy to reach maybe that end goal that they do want to try out it can't be overnight which recently happened with a gigantic brand in our country. So, yeah, thank you for saying that. It's a great conversation. We could chat for hours about that. <laughs> Is there another question? Yes. Yeah, since you are in the business of marketing, uh, uh, something we mentioned about the charge, how do you charge your professional fees? I'm sorry? Professional, how do you charge? Something? Charge professional fees? Uh, here's... I keep giving you annoying answers and I don't want to. I am at no liberty to discuss anything financial, um, but my team my team is. So I could actually get you in touch with, and sometimes it depends on the project, right? And we're not solely a marketing, uh, the diversity movement is not solely marketing. We do a lot of marketing and we also partner with some other local businesses for, hey, this is what we can do. And then here's what X company can do to really help you with that story. So actually, if you are interested, I'm happy to connect you with somebody to get you those specific numbers. And we would love to you know, partner. Um, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I wish I could, I am, I am not at liberty to say. And actually some of the specific projects, even if I would say something, which I'm not at liberty to, it might change depend on what the needs are and, and the um, robustness of the project. But please reach out. Thanks for the question. Anything, any other questions? Thank you. The online yes. uh, folks asked mm -hmm. if I could email the guidebook or the link to the guidebook out to the people who've registered. Yes, okay. I will send you the, I will, I will send you the direct link. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, absolutely. And so is, do you have a kind of post email going out? I do. Okay. We'll post the, the YouTube or the recording. Great. And I'll, I can include that. Yep. 
that will be great. So the link is in there. And then, yes, question. Oh, brands I don't support? <laughs> I'll say something and then you'll see me out and be like, Susie. No, um, um, I, yes, there are um, some brands I do not support, specifically if I feel like myself and my family and my children are not safe. So that's more personal than anything. Um, is there a slip up every now and then? Sure. Um, but, and I actually can tell you about, I, I still support this brand, but I was quite hurt by this brand personally. And this is a massive corporation, which is Target. Target historically has been a very, very safe place for the LGBTQ plus community. And they've made some really amazing efforts with black creators, brown creators. I mean, amazing. Like I wanna go in and see my Tabitha Brown stuff in Target and I will buy it. The first thing I see, right? And we have, but Target has not, I mean, when I say historically, like this is not new actually for Target to be more inclusive, to expand, to be challenged, to say, I'm gonna work direct with a creator, a business owner. We're gonna elevate people to have them go from maybe solopreneurs to, wow, they can't keep up, multimillionaires. And I would only want to see that continue. What happened this year, has anybody heard about some of the pride situation that happened this year with Target? And now I'll give some context. Um, you know, and historical, not new, like 20 plus years of inclusion of the LGBTQ plus community and continued efforts of saying, we don't have this right, we can always improve. And that will continue because the values, as we just talked about, the values are there and they're public. That's great. This year, the Pride collection was put out all over the country. You know, uh, they come out every year. I always wait to get my one thing every year because I know that's a place I can go. And because it's supporting a specific artist. Like it's not just going to, it, like there's a partnership there, right? So I want to spend my money there. And all the Pride stuff got put out. And I know we're almost at time. I'll be quick. <laughs> I'm a storyteller. So you got me. Um, <laughs> uh, and a couple places in the country, there is extreme reaction of people not in support of the community in the stores, ripping things down, just shooting videos that were saying some garments for, for, for children, which they actually were not. I mean, creating such a dangerous story, um, which then is represented in tandem by Target, right? What was Target's reaction to this noise? By a few, but it was starting to popcorn throughout the country. Target pulled the entire Pride line. They, it's always in the front of the store. They put it in the back of every store, took more than half of it away, recalled half of more than half of the collection, and actually left some of that on the floor. So then when somebody would go as a consumer still to buy it, you would check out, it would say it was recalled. You'd have to get a manager then to tell you this is recalled. Like it's it's kind of that confirmation of, yeah, you're not supposed to be in here. You know, you're not supposed to purchase this. These artists are not important. Not only about me, forget about me. For, what about these artists, these business people? And um, then they said, we're gonna have extra security in the store because they're such a threat. So one, as a consumer, that made me think twice. Two, you know who else I thought about? The employees of Target. What about all your LGBTQ plus people that work there and saw you? Sh they themselves had to put the stuff in the back of the store, have security for them, not to say, hey, X person that's making this noise, this is not what we stand for. You can shop somewhere else. So they backtracked on their values and created a story that may tell us that they may have been performative all along. And I actually truly don't believe that. But actually, deep down is like hurt personally, you know, and for the employees, for kids, for families. So that's a brand I've been careful with. And how, how, based on our society, do we avoid Target? <laughs> we can. It's kind of hard. And you might see me there tomorrow, okay? <laughs> but I had a, it was one of the first, like, visceral reaction to it. 
And I was, and you know what I did? I took, put the family in the car and we went to Target because I needed personally in my own personal way, I needed to see it. I needed to see what it was to be shoved in the back because I also know our community is not the first. And how could I learn from that and take myself out of myself to think about it as an education point for me personally. So that, I know that was way more emotional than you expected, but that's the, that's been the last couple of months. And so, yeah, we'll support, but I am hoping, cause I'm also a hopeful person that they'll realign and have a conversation. Wow. We really stood away and we backed off of our values, which we've had for decades. What did that tell our employees and our consumers? So that's, that was branding. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. You're okay. Oh, 105. Oh, five minutes. I'm sorry. I just okay. want to make sure if you need to give this is the Yes, you're more than welcome to. I'm sorry. My LinkedIn, please connect on LinkedIn, Susie Silver, all S's, and then email me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>